Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabir and we have been discussing English language teaching. Today we are covering the last session and that is based on computer assisted language learning and information and communication technology. So before we go ahead let us quickly recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, we discussed technology in a broader way and we also discussed the conceptualization of computer-based instruction and its role as a contributor and an active participant. Besides, we looked through the history and we came to know that there were several projects that were involved in the development of computer-assisted language learning. The first project was PLATO. And it was the uh, project which began for instructional teaching and research. In addition, we also studied about the TICCID project which was based on the television technology and it came up with the idea of presenting text, audio, video and animation on screen. Besides, we also looked up the idea of microcomputers when it brought a boom in the 1980s. In addition, we learned the concept of ALLP project which came in 1983 and it was the creation of communication based prototypes for beginning and intermediate courses of second language learning. Moreover, we looked up at the ARPA project which was one of the successful projects and it came later and it established network to implement the protocol suit, uh, transmission control protocol and internet protocol. The Camille project which was introduced at a later point in 1993, however its aim was to promote interactive multimedia environment among learners. And in 2000 we saw another kind of boom with the different applications and prospects coming up in the language learning pedagogy and learning environments. Besides we also understood that computer performs as tutor, tool and duty. In tutor, computer displays the information and works as a teacher, as a facilitator and guide. Besides, tool helps a learner to work through uh, di with different applications. So, computer can be utilized as a spreadsheet or calculator and other ways. Duty, the computer works as a student. You can program computer in a certain way and can uh, put inputs and as a result, you can find that a number of outputs could have been produced. So, in computer based instruction brought a new dimension to the language learning and teaching pedagogy and it brought a number of uh, horizons that could uh, enhance learners participation as well as teachers role. So, now after the understanding of the conceptualization of computer based instruction and computer assisted language learning, let us try to see what this uh, session brings to you. After this session, you will be able to understand the conceptual framework of CALL and CT. So, in the last session, we have gone through the concepts uh, like we have CBE, CBI, similarly we have CAL uh, that is CAL and now we have CALL that is computer assisted language learning. We also have ICT which is getting introduced into many developing and developed nations like India and also we have uh, um, a number of other computer uh, uh, technologies like CMC, computer mediated communication where we facilitate uh, managerial uh, work to computer. Now coming on uh, to the next point as it says that after this session you will be able to apply the general understanding of call and ICT. So it is not that we want to take the technology thing into the language learning lab, but we would like to bring this technology component into your lives by making it easier and uh, you will be able to apply the general understanding of both the concepts after this session. 
Now, let us try to understand the definition of the call. Before I give you the formal definition, let us look up at these scenarios. So, at first there is a point that uh, says high school students emailing college English learners in English teams of elementary school students doing a vocabulary matching exercise on the computer. The second situation is Indian students using a self access computer lab to complete software based spelling activities in English. The third point says that teachers creating multilingual web pages so that the parents of their ESL learners will understand what is happening in class. And the fourth line as it says that an English language teacher explaining a grammar point using presentation software. So, which of these examples are the uh, one with uh, go, which goes with computer assisted language learning? The first one, the second one, the third one or the fourth one? If you say they are all the examples of call, you are right. What exactly is computer assisted language learning? It means using computers to support language teaching and learning in some way. So, this definition applies to all languages, skill areas and of course, contents as well. So, very specifically, call is basically a software, a tool that designed to promote language learning. So, call as I am mentioning over here, it is a software that is used to help the learners learn the skill areas and the contents and promotes language learning. Now, coming on to the next point, there are three themes of computer assisted language learning on which it is based on. So, at first is it is mentioned that call is focused not only on technology, but on language learning. So, it primarily means that we are not just focusing on how it can be brought with audio, video, text and narration, but it is also that how we help the learners to um, facilitate learning. So, the word enhanced and uh, assisted is used to make you understand that computer only facilitates the language in the learning process. Educators need to avoid putting technology ahead of learning in their classroom. It is more of giving the assistance. So, a more accurate term for using technology in learning might be language lang learning through. And the second point says that call occurs in many contexts and with many diverse participants. So, it is quite obvious that practitioners need to be prepared to meet a variety of needs. And the third point says that call pedagogy should be grounded in theory and practice. So, it should be grounded in such a way that a number of fields, especially uh, applied linguistics, second language learning, psychology and computer science uh, are included. So, call pedagogy is a quite uh, uh, broader platform, but not as broad as uh, computer based instruction. However, it mainly focuses on few important components, it mainly uh, gives the learner the importance and the practice of the language. Besides, it uh, helps uh, the learner to develop the language in context and also it is based on theory and practice. Now, moving on to the next slide, there are some principles of call. And uh, these principles will help you understand that how call is designed in a framework. So, the first point says that the conditions that help create optimal classroom language learning environments uh, using technology to support language learning comprises of the conditions that help uh, the learners to adopt the environment and bring it into, the, uh, into their real lives. The second point as it is mentioned over here, uh, using technology to support language learning would comprise the national ESL standards. So, it should not go beyond that and it should support the guidelines 
for the technology in a responsible way that can be used in the language classroom. And in addition, the national education and education for technology learning should also be taken into consideration. Now coming on to the next slide, there are number of benefits of using computer assisted language learning. The first benefit as it is mentioned in the slide says that learners have opportunities to interact socially and negotiate meaning. So although individual practice like you know homework may help learners master their elements in a way that it helps them to learn the structure more effective learning it takes place when learners can use language actively and creatively with people they come to understand. Anyone who has a struggle to learn a foreign language has probably had the experience of successfully completing grammar exercises, but then being totally tongue tied when trying to form a simple request in the target language would have been difficult. So this computer assisted language learning provides that scope and it helps a learner in uh, facilitating that way. The second point as mentioned in the slide said that learners interact in the target language with an authentic audience. Now learners have a difficulty paying attention when a peer is giving a presentation in class because the information is really addressed to the teacher. So they will learn more effectively if they have a stake in what other learners are presenting to. So let us say learners interact with each other, learners have a uh, reason to listen and respond. So during initial uh, stages, experiences would come into uh, call. In addition, a lot of other things like uh, reasons to respond would also come along. And uh, you will be able to precisely proceed uh, with the struggling student as a teacher. And in more advanced stages of learning, students must have access to sympathetic fluent speakers that could be provided through a call and uh, students will be getting access to adjust uh, their uh, uh, task in accordance with their competence. Now coming on to the third point, learners are involved in authentic uh, task. And when I say task, it would mean that learners are given the opportunity to interact in such environments where they become active and at the same time uh, they participate um, in a more efficient way. So developing authentic tasks is the most important learning condition because the task influences all of the others. For our purposes like uh, an authentic task is one that learners perceive they will use outside of the class in the real world that parallels or replicates uh, what they have said. So a teacher can you know shout or listen to me or uh, you know they, they uh, can do eventual exercises to get students to pay attention and learn. But giving students an interesting task, giving them an active task and they have the skill to support and time to complete is more effective. So these kind of benefits can be utilized when computer assisted language learning is practiced. Now the other point says that learners are exposed to and encouraged to produce varied and creative language. So remember uh, having you know essay anxiety, being nervous about speaking in front of the class, you know uh, uh, picking uh, a multiple choice answer you really did not know the answer would be. So not everyone acquires or demonstrate knowledge and experience in the same way. This is especially true for learners for different educational and cultural backgrounds. So what happens is uh, that the learners need multiple forms of input and a variety of ways to express themselves as they turn on different language and culture and possibly in a new way of approaching knowledge and the learning process. So the learning tasks become adjustable to the learners level and uh, a variety of options are available for the learners to go through. Besides there is another point which is mentioned in the slide learners have enough time and feedback. So some students work more slowly than others and some need more less guidance for different tasks. So giving students the right amount of time and administering appropriate feedback are some among the uh, you know most difficult but also important conditions to meet. Therefore uh, uh, computer assisted language learning uh, helps a learner 
to practice at uh, efficient time and also there is uh, a feedback process that is uh, encompassed in the process. Uh, now, the other point which is mentioned over here says that learners are guided to attend mindfully to the learning process. So, when I say learners are guided, it means uh, learners are given a kind of uh, reflection on what to do, how to do and where to proceed further. So, all too often students are told what to learn, but not how to learn it, right. So, although each student tends to rely on his or own participant habits or preferences in learning style that they can own, optimal learning then is also about how to go further more precisely and what steps should a learner follow. And students who perceive a task how and how, why will also be more attentive and more motivated to learn. So, it is about the gradual process that takes place in learning and call provides that platform to help the learners to follow a certain way to follow certain guidelines and make it the most of it. Now, the next point as mentioned over here says that learners work in an atmosphere with an ideal stress anxiety level. This point comes up with the fact that learners are exposed to real life situations or it is being artificially created in order to make the learners more, um, uh, uh, in order to support the learners in a better way. So, what I would say here that learners work in an atmosphere, it simply means that the amount of stress or pressure that help students learn effectively is different for each person and language learners should feel comfortable enough to take risks with the target language, but they should not be put to sleep by overly simple minded tasks and exercises. So, educators can create tasks depending upon the students levels, they can create the level of X and if they find that students are enough efficient in attaining that level, they can increase the challenge by plus 1. So, X plus 1 would efficiently go to help our students uh, to adjust their competency uh, in the process. Now, the last point of this slide as it is mentioned over here says that learners autonomy is supported and this is the most important point. Why? Because many language class push learners along a rigid schedule requiring a certain number of book, chapters, exercises and essays in a given amount of time. So, this teacher centered syllabus may be effective for some students, but it may ignore the needs of the others. So, allowing learners to control some of their learning can help the teacher to provide different language levels, interests and also their learning styles. So, for example, learners can choose their own books to read, create their own composition topics or even choose what kind of tasks they will do and when. Some schools, uh, you know, uh, provide a prescriptive way and they follow uh, a certain guideline and they do ignore the learners uh, pace. But with call, you can adjust your learning process um, in your own way. Now, coming on to the next slide. Uh, there are three approaches of call and these approaches of call are quite widely popular because uh, the approaches bring up uh, three perspectives, one behaviorist, the other one is communicative and the third one is the integrative call. So, uh, Horsher and uh, Haley focused on the typology of call, they identified three historical phases and they classified according to their underlying pedagogical and methodological approaches. So, first of all, let us take up the behaviorist call which conceived in the 1950s and uh, it was implemented in the 1960s to 1970s. It consists of drill and practice, in which the computer presented a stimulus and the learner provided a response. Moreover, the computer would analyze the student's input and give feedback. 
and more sophisticated programs would react to students' mistakes by branching to help screens and remedial activities. Right? And while such programs and their underlying pedagogy still exist today, behavioristic approach to study language learning have been rejected by many of the teachers and the increasing sophistication of using computer technology has led call to look for other possibilities. So, though behavioristic call was quite popular in language learning, it brought different aspects, it amazed the learners and it brought more comprehensibility, the power to the audience. However, it was mainly practiced on the earlier methods that we studied like the structural approach and the grammar translation approach where the learners were asked to go for drill and practice like we had an audio lingual approach as well. And uh, though there was a possibility of of connecting uh, the stimulus and response, uh, feedback could also be provided and uh, upon the basis of uh, feedback, remedial courses or remedial uh, uh, practice were given to the learners. It was quite successful at that time, however, a lot of scope was there to improve further. And with that uh, 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 perception, there came another perspective of uh, implementing call that was communicative call. So, this was basically the second phase of call and it was also uh, proposed by Warsha and Helle and in communicative approach, uh, it was said that it became prominent in the late 1970s and the 1980s and in the communicative approach, the focus was on using the language rather than analysis of the language. So, I am writing over here it was mainly focused on the use of the language and the analysis of the language was merely ignored. And grammar was taught implicitly then explicitly. So, implicit uh, approach of teaching language was adopted in this call. It allows uh, the originality as well as flexibility in student output of the uh, uh, language. So, uh, I am writing over here flexibility and originality, which somehow contributes to the creativity. So, the communicative approach coincided with the arrival of the personal computer PC which made computing more widely available and resulted in boom in the development of software for language learning. So, the first call software in this phase continued to provide skill practice. By skill I would mean either listening, speaking, reading or writing and other things such as uh, paced reading, text construction and language games were also used. However, the computer uh, remained as tutor only. The role of computer was consigned to being a facilitator or guide and here the computer did not give much access to other participants of the classroom. However, the approach was quite different from the structural one. Now, coming on to the next point, this says integrative call. Integrative call refers to the embracing of multimedia and the internet in 1990s. And this third phase was also described by Washer and Helly and they talked it in 1990s and they tried to address the criticisms of the communicative approach by integrating the teaching of language skills into tasks and projects. And these tasks and projects uh, provided direction and coherence and it also coincided with the development of multimedia technology such as text, graphics, sound and animation. So, I am writing over here the use of multimedia was prevalent in 1990s with the advent of integrative call.
So, call in this period saw a definite shift from the use of the computer for drill and tutorial purposes to a medium for extending education beyond the classroom, beyond a particular setup. And this multimedia call started with interactive laser video disc. This simply refers to the fact that the authority was going under the control of the learner and the shift was taking place from being teacher centered to the learner centered. So, here the teacher and uh, uh, the computer was not taking the central position, but the learners were taking active part into the learning process. Now, coming on to the next uh, point as it is mentioned over here, it says that designing and creating of soft, uh, call software were not that easier. It required a certain kind of expertise to attain it. And uh, what kind of expertise did it require? At first, a subject specialist should also be there, uh, uh, who is also known as the content provider. And usually, it could be taken up with the language teacher, who can encompass the skills of uh, the designing and authoring material, as well as being the subject specialist. And uh, like mentioned in the slide, it says who is responsible for providing the content and pedagogical input. So, these two components were highly important when it comes to the authoring of the call material or call software. And more than one subject specialist is required for large call projects, because the authoring would require the uh, knowledge of uh, technicalities and at the same time the skills that are required would also be uh, taken up. The second point as it is mentioned in the slide says that a programmer who is familiar with the chosen programming language or authoring tool. So, it refers again to the fact that I just mentioned in the first point that somebody who is quite efficient in uh, choosing programming language, know the inputs and the outputs of the computer system, know where the computer can perform the role of being a duty and also have the efficient knowledge of authoring a tool. So, um, a wholesome uh, kind of personality was required in order to take this call thing ahead. And uh, we also can incorporate a graphic designer to produce pictures and icons and to advise on fonts, colors, screen layout, etcetera. So, the next point says that a professional photographer would also be required at the very least a very good amateur photographer, graphic designers often have a background in photography too. Why these examples are being given in this slide? Because uh, I would like to tell you that not just the expertise in designing, listening, speaking, reading and writing tasks, but also the technicalities that are required for computer operation and software operation are e equally important. Now, coming on to the next point, a sound engineer and a video technician will be required if the package is to, you know, contain substantial amount of sound and video. And more than that, an instructional designer developing a call package is more than just putting a textbook into the computer. It is not merely uh, the idea of giving you the extensive information or asking you to read a particular point, but it contains a lot of other things. For example, checking the student's uh, competency, then matching the learner's tasks with the available data and then providing the information to the learner and then further taking the feedback, providing the remedial courses and the remedial options that could help the learners to improve in a further way. A number of levels could have been designed and a number of uh, research uh, papers can have been published in this era. So, uh, this is about bringing language on screen and just not the screen plays an important role, but the in-depth knowledge of computer as well as uh, the language processing are important. Now, let us take up the examples of call that are uh, 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 present in the modern day scenario. And uh, the few examples like I have tried to put it on the screen, please see through it. The first 
uh, slide say the first point in the slide says that corpora have been used for many years as the basis of linguistic research and also for the compilation of dictionaries and reference books. Nowadays, if you want to search a meaning for example of a word, then you can immediately go and look for a dictionary online and can find it out. Similarly, a number of reference styles are mentioned there if you are writing a thesis or a project. And what you can do, you can put up an APA style or MLA style or Howard style and accordingly you can insert the name of the author, the year, the book name and uh, page number and so on. So, without any effort you will see that all the details will be combined and it will be produced in a more efficient way. It would uh, compromise the human labor and in fact, it will enhance the use of technology with the ease of time and place. Now, coming on to the second point virtual world date back to the adventure games and simulations. So, let me tell you uh, here that adventure games and simulations have brought extensive exercises and practices in the language classroom. And though it is not widely popular in countries like India, but it has extensively produced a number of benefits. So, adventure games are mainly based on a behavioristic approach where learners are provided a, with a kind of benefit or they are being rewarded after attaining a task. And like we studied in the conditioning, classical conditioning and the operant conditioning where learners would uh, find themselves in a position to uh, form a habit of learning process and they will eventually get addicted to it and they will keep on continuing their learning process level 1 after the other and level 2 and then they will keep on expanding themselves and ultimately it will produce a learning process. However, there are a lot of criticism when it comes to conditioning of the system because we mainly based on the idea that learning is a part of creativity, language learning especially contributes the, uh, the original form of a person. However, uh, you know adventure games and simulations especially when it comes to uh, the different type of tasks, they have been giving up the new perspective, a new horizon in language learning. So, it eventually came up in 1970s and uh, uh, the first example was Colossal Cave Adventure. Uh, I mean one of the few examples uh, uh, was Cave Adventure, uh, a text only simulation in which the user communicated with the computer by typing commands at the keyboard. Nowadays, you can use computer a system in order to regulate mouse for example, to get you through certain adventures into the computer system, video games and so on. So, a text only simulation uh, was there and a learner could get a number of benefits. It was started back in 1970 and uh, it was one of the famous examples of the adventure games that were brought into the language learning and teaching pedagogy. Now, coming on to the third point, the early adventure games and simulations led on multi-user variants which were known as MUTs, multi-user domains. It means a number of people could uh, use those simulations and games, right? Like the predecessors, MUTs were text only with the difference that they were available to a wider audience. So, uh, MUTs have a speciality and uh, though they were games and simulations, but they were effectively based on text idea. The other media were not included at this point of time. However, it was uh, covering a large number of audience and um, it was mainly based on the earlier games that were based on the behavioristic approach. Coming on to the third point, the example of the call includes virtual words. At first, we are graphically based albeit only in a two dimensional environment. By two dimensional, I mean 2D. So, this was created in order to uh, uh, facilitate uh, the learning environment which was quite virtual and it was mainly graphically based. Each participant was represented by a visual representation who could interact with other entities using a text chat. In recent forms, we have seen the creation of avatars and this was the earlier form of the avatars where uh, the representation of your individuality was there and you could find themselves as if you are really doing that task. But here the task was quite artificial, not the original one, not the real one. However, the avatar was created, the entity 
the the graphical representation of your individuality was created in such a way that you could feel the realistic portion uh, of yours coming out so in this way you could relate and find a relation between uh, yourself and the content and the happening that is taking place in the language learning environment now coming on to the next point the advent of three dimensional virtual worlds which means 3d came into existence and it induced the possibility of audio communication between entities who were represented as disembodied heads in three dimensional abstract landscape so this 3d came into the world and uh, it enhances the possibility of using audio communication and the two entities could interact in the virtual world and that could be in 3d so these are the examples of call and this is not a new concept it has been in practice for a very long time though we say that the technology is emerging it is emerging because it has quite uh, gone far ahead but let me tell you that it is an old concept however the research has not been taken place in a variety of ways so a lot of uh, a scope of improvement is there to help the learners uh, identify themselves in a better position what is more important is to find out which multimedia which uh, 3d or 2d creates a better impact on the cognitive capacity of the learning and uh, in which context uh, and what kind of material would suit them so uh, here call you know gives the scope that a generalization cannot happen you cannot provide one uh, exercise or practice rule example to all people who are present at the globe what you can do you can keep on changing author different programs and materials with respect to their context their situation and so on now coming on to the next slide there is a discussion on ICT but uh, before we take up this discussion into the session let me tell you that ICT stands for information and communication technology it is widely practiced we put up a projector we put up a screen and uh, we give up the learners the idea of how video and the audio plays up a lot of schools including universities are using ICT it is being widely uh, taken up into uh, almost every educational sector for every meeting you have this projector thing so ICT has brought many revolutions especially in the countries where call uh, taking and call making is not easy and feasible so let us go one by one and see how each line demonstrate the discussion of ICT at first it says that ICT is used in schools and it uses a diverse set of ICT tools to communicate, create, disseminate, store and manage information since there is a system which is established over there. So like any system it helps people to communicate and uh, we have a proper system to go through it if it is accompanied with acoustic furniture and acoustic surroundings it would facilitate the communication in a more easier way besides it will help the learners to create disseminate and store and manage information which can be taken up so at the same time you can put up the camera and a lot of other features of ICT technology can be incorporated in a classroom to make the learning and teaching easier and faster now coming on to the second point in some context ICT has also become an integral part of the language learning and interaction so the recent sustainable development goals according to the UNDP and UNESCO uh, there has been a provision that by 2030 they will be implementing information and communication technology in all educational institutions be it primary secondary or higher level so ICT has become a part of teaching learning process and uh, it is encouraged that teachers should incorporate in their syllabus in their teaching process so that learners can take a maximum benefit of it and through uh, various approaches like um, using ch chalkboards this digital whiteboard would also encourage the learners to look up at the teaching pedagogy in a new domain uh, though we have been using the chalkboards uh, and other traditional methods 
computer based instruction or you say ICT has uh, brought up a new uh, dimension uh, to the uh, teaching and learning process. Now, learners have a wider options to look up through and like many researchers say it is more impactful in enhancing students learning and process. Now, coming on to the next point, it says that when teachers are digitally literate and trained to use ICT, these approaches can lead to higher order thinking skills, provide creative and individualized options for students to express their understandings. So, teachers can also take a maximum benefit to help the learners take up the uh, process. So, if they are digitally literate, they know how to use the system, they know how to open up uh, and uh, the other important uh, terms, uh, their operationalizations, they can make the maximum use of ICT and with the help of their expertise, uh, they will be able to develop the learners high order thinking skills because a variety of options can be facilitated. Let me give you the example of listening skills. So, while developing listening skills, you can show them the TED talk for instance or you can show up uh, a speech of a, of a famous uh, leader and uh, you can also expose them to native speakers. However, in the scenarios like we have in India, teacher and the learner both are the non-native speakers in majority of the cases. So, learners do not get the chance to get themselves exposed to the native speakers of the language and also they do not uh, find the way to interact with them. So, by using the technology, you can show them how the native speakers use how they produce the sounds of English language and how they come up with uh, different research and programs. So, of course, with their expertise, a lot of things can be done and can incorporate effective creativity. Coming on to the last point of the discussion on ICT, ICT issues planners must consider uh, the total cost benefit of equations, supplying and maintaining the requisite infrastructure and ensuring investments that are matched with teacher support and other policies aimed at effective ICT use. So, let us not forget the fact that planning and implementation should be correlated. If you have planned technology, you know how should the expenditure goes on, what are the infrastructure requirements and what policies can you adopt in order to help the learners go up with the speed and the scenario. So, requisite information is quite important in order to uh, take up the uh, infrastructure and uh, investments are to be raised be it grants or the fundings given by the governments and uh, in addition to it the expertise of the students and the teachers are also required. Even if the students do not have the teachers uh, expertise in computer would be required. Now, coming on to the next slide says ICT tools. So, let us go uh, step by step and see that what are the tools that are required in order to find uh, ICT around us. So, there has been a policy that one laptop per child should be in, taken up into uh, the policy. So, less expensive laptops have been designed for the use in a school. However, there is a lot of uh, problem with regard to the financial constraints and still reaching uh, to the cost of 10,000 and even 12,000 would uh, matter uh, for people who are coming from lower socioeconomic background. So, in addition to it, we cannot ignore the fact that with the laptop purchase, there comes the lower power consumption, a low cost operating system and special reprogramming and mesh network functions that are required for its inclusivity in the classroom and at their homes. And even if this digital divide, by digital divide, I mean uh, that people who belong to higher socioeconomic strata and the people who uh, belong to lower socioeconomic strata, they have a divide in between and uh, the higher uh, uh, low, uh, 
and the higher socioeconomic strata people can afford technology, however, the other one could not. So, it is important to bridge the gap between these two entities, between these two communities and we can do it by lowering uh, the price value of the laptop, uh, so that no child gets deprived of the basic infrastructure facilities of adopting a computer, but we can also ensure by suggesting uh, uh, to the government and to the policy makers that with uh, technology, there should be also uh, lower power consumption. Uh, a low cost operating system and special reprogramming systems that can be included and these should be focused on the companies, uh, the organizations who are designing computers for students and especially for children. There is an ease in technology. We had a huge computer system back in the 1960s and at that time a specific uh, building was required to locate a computer. Nowadays computer has become smaller, it is even becoming more smaller. So, uh, we, we had the computer big one, then we had the micro computer, uh, we have now tablets, uh, we have uh, notebooks. And now we have a computer in the form of mobile phones. So, how about the tablets use? Let us go up through it. Tablets are small personal computers with a touch screen allowing uh, input with a keyboard or mouse and inexpensive learning software are there. You can download a number of, of applications. You can run either through Android system or uh, micro or Windows system and it can be downloaded uh, into tablets and uh, a number of learning and teaching applications can be introduced by incorporating into tablets. They are cost free and uh, the only uh, challenge is to make it uh, downloadable is also to avail a variety of applications and uh, more than that to make it versatile and responsible in use. The next point as it is mentioned in these slides says that interactive whiteboards or smart boards are uh, required for ICT implementation and interactive whiteboards allow projected computer images to be displayed, manipulated, dragged, clicked or copied. Uh, like uh, during my research, let me give you this example, I was going from school to school to find out where the call is practiced, where the ICT is practiced and I was quite surprised to know this fact that many schools adopted the ICT this information and communication technology, but it was not implemented properly. Uh, you know the projector was located in a way where could students cannot view the uh, screen and uh, the sound system was not clear enough that uh, so that the students could hear it properly. You know these kind of disrupt, uh, disturbances or uh, disruptivity would uh, uh, take up uh, to the fact that uh, cognitive load would be induced among the learners. Instead of gaining, they would keep on losing. So, let us uh, ensure the fact that if you are implementing information and communication technology into your school, into your educational system, make sure that it is properly maintained. And this maintenance and it takes an important part, uh, let me make it clear also that it should be displayed at a right place, it should be, it can be manipulated wherever it is required and it should be dragged wherever you can put it as far as its feasibility is, is concerned, clicked, uh, you know the authority can be given to the learners if the teacher thinks it is important. And uh, similarly, um, uh, it can be followed by a number of educational institutions. Now, coming on to the next point that is e-readers. E-readers are basically the electronic devices that can hold hundreds of books in digital form and they are increasingly utilized in the delivery of reading material. So, uh, reading materials are getting successful and you can also adjust the light of the e-reading uh, for the e-readers. Uh, if you want to be, if you want to make it bright, you can do that way. If you want to make it uh, uh, slightly uh, less bright, then you can also uh, use it that way. So, flipped classrooms can also be taken up into consideration. The flipped classroom model 
involves lecturing and practice at home via computer guided instruction and attractive learning activities in class is allowing for expanded curriculum. Though uh, the computer and student interaction is encouraged, but the problem of digital divide emerges. Even if the computer is provided in the educational institutions and is not facilitated at home, then the child is likely to suffer this problem. So, uh, we have to solve out this problem by taking up certain features like I mentioned in the first. We have to lower up the cost and we have to encourage the uh, designers, the, the, uh, the uh, engineers to lower up its power consumption, you know to go through other important uh, uh, concerns so that the technology becomes easier and faster. And there is one important solution that is emerging nowadays and it is the introduction of the sixth sense technology. With sixth sense technology, you need not to use computer device or a laptop or a particular tablet. You just need to draw a circle on your hand and the time will be displayed. So, this kind of technology is made to resolve the issues like digital divide to help and facilitate every child that exists in the world to become aware of the technology and use it in a more responsible way. So, there is a little investigation on the learning outcomes of flip classrooms, how a student perceptions about flip classrooms are mixed but generally positive as they prefer the cooperative learning in the classroom lecture. Uh, the, the, the idea of flipped classroom is emerging, but like I said digital divide is also emerging. So, we need to solve up the issue of the digital divide and the implementation of ICT and more than that call, which is the main concept here should be implemented. And like many people say uh, that um, call is not successful. Uh, my question to them is why call is not successful, if it is not even uh, implemented, we cannot decide that it is successful or it is failed. First, we have to facilitate the basic components that are required, the technical possibilities and then implement it and then find out their effects uh, with regard to its use and usage. We have adopted technology in aviation sector, in banking sector and a number of other domains as well and it has lowered the human labor in many ways. Like in teaching process, we can also uh, reduce the consumption of uh, uh, let us say uh, the, the those heavy lectures and we can induce more interactive uh, way of learning by incorporating the teacher and the com uh, uh, computer, but there would be a slight shift with regard to the language learning uh, uh, pedagogy that the teacher would not play the role of uh, central uh, authority but it would become a, um, a facilitator, a guide which is uh, an ultimate goal of language learning process. Now, here are some guidelines for using educational technology in language classroom. So, what are these guidelines? So, first of all use technology to support the pedagogical, uh, uh, pedagogical issues and goals of the classroom and curriculum. So, the main idea of introducing the technology is uh, mainly to help them in studies and that is something that we have to reach it up, right. And uh, the second thing is make the technology accessible to all learners. So, like uh, the plans of uh, government and the uh, UNDP and all, uh, the technology should be accessible to the, all the learners. The third point says that use the technology as a tool and use it uh, effectively. So, uh, take the help of it, use uh, the technology as a tool and uh, take the teacher a superior one who has an extensive learning experience um, in the field, the human one would eventually make this technology more enhanced and will make this uh, technology as a gem for your learning process. Uh, besides, you should use it efficiently, take all benefits and use a computer and peripherals, practice responsible use of technology, use electronic resources appropriately, there should be a responsible and ethical approach towards using technology. It cannot be taken up like anything, not every material available on the internet 
is worth watching, worth reading. What is more important is that you have to define the goal, look up at your uh, ultimate objectives and then uh, proceed in that way. So, the other thing is design, develop and publish products. If you are getting an idea, do it in a way, gather information and collaborate with others. So, make the use of technology in an extensive way and you will be able to make the most of it. The other slide says that the assessment tools are important uh, when it comes to the implementation of computer assisted language learning and ICT. So, what are assessment tools that are available? Uh, there are varieties like we talked about portfolios, self assessment. So, these kind of traditional methodologies and the methi um, um, traditional methods of assessment are gr upgraded in technological ways as well. Electronic portfolios appear to be excellent tools for documenting and exploring the process. Besides, a number of companies produce off the shelf, uh, you know, portfolio software. So, one of the examples is Hyper Studio, the other examples is Folio Live. Uh, the SOPI is mainly used for speaking oral uh, proficiency uh, testing, and there is an upgraded version also, Copy. So, SOPI is the former one, and the Copy is the later one. Uh, uh, these are the performance based tape mediated speaking test that relies on audio tape instructions and a test booklet to elicit uh, oral performances from the examinee. So, how many words, uh, vocabs you have used in your utterance? What kind of varieties do you use when you speak? And what is the length of their content? What is the topic development? These important features can be analyzed through the use of copy and SOPI. Now, coming up to the CVASR, which is computer based assessment system for reading. This is also developed and like many tests of TOEFL and IELTS, they are being extensively used. So, this program provides an assessment that includes screening, progress, monitoring and skills analysis to be used in the classroom. Like you have been provided with one paragraph and you are asked to provide the suitable meaning or the closest meaning of that particular word, then uh, the uh, learner uh, uh, puts the option, choose it and then what happens is the next screen appears to you with a new task or with a new question. So, in this way a lot of uh, computer assessment system for reading are appearing. Now, the writing has also taken up a major progress. Writing on a computer is now possible in most of the educational contexts and workplaces making research into computer based writing assessment essential. So, like a speaking test, how many uh, sentences you have written, what kind of varieties do you have used. Uh, also, you are using simple compound and complex sentences. In addition, are you able to put uh, coherence and uh, cohesion in your sentences? What is the idea of the topic development for you? Are you consigned towards uh, the topic or you are going beyond than that? Uh, uh, the range of vocabulary you have, a lot of other things can also be traced out when it comes to the possibility of teaching language and writing through computer. Now, let us reach out to the conclusion. Uh, so, at the end, uh, like I would say that call began as software that run on mainframe computers. It started with the idea of uh, computer technology that came up in uh, big forms. With, with time, the size got lowered. So, uh, the mainframe computers provided learners with drills and other language practices. So, like we had Plato, then we have TICCIT, and then we had uh, other projects that told us to use language technology in a certain way more structured forms were there, learners were given the opportunities to use language in the form of drill and practice and they were uh, doing it as well. So, call first began with this approach, however, with time it modulated its way. So, call occurs with many contexts with many diverse participants, now it can be used with many people be it the older learner or the young learner. 
and not just this you can change the level of the material the level of the content in the software in accordance with the competence of the learners now coming on to the third point it says that using calls should comprise four components and what are those four components let me write it down here listening speaking reading and writing so like uh, uh, these are essential uh, skills of computer language learning and uh, language learning itself but there is one more component which is left what is that that is the expertise in using technology having the knowledge of the software so you know the programming language if you know uh, the uh, operationalization of the software it would be addition mm, to your expertise so i'm writing over here technical expertise is also required coming on to the second last point the conditions that create optimal classroom esl standards guidelines for technology etc are also important and planning and implementation should consider different variables what are these variables such as cost effectiveness such as the feasibility of incorporating technology into the classroom the location the place and the timing that are essential for its implementation besides in future new technologies may have the potential to function as a teacher with the ability for creativity responsibility and initiative at this time uh, we are considering call and the use of technology as surrogate teacher but in future it has the potential of replacing it but it has taken up many debates on this a supervising teacher should always be there to help the learners guide what to go through how to go through and uh, why to go through and uh, we can certainly do it by using it in a more responsible way these are the references with this we have come to an end of this session uh we have completed the uh english language teaching course and i'm sure you have got extensive benefit from it thank you very much for joining